Hey guys, how you doing today? So, my most popular video has been the can video, where I solder the Schrader valve to this can and fill it up with, in this case, WD-40, pressurize it, and spray WD-40 out of it. Uh, and it, believe me, it's been amazing to see how popular this video has been. It's, it's exceeded any of my other videos. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pressurize this can to failure so we can see exactly how much PSI it will hold before it lets go. The reason I'm going to do that is because there's a lot of comments from people that don't know what they're talking about uh, saying that this is just right on the verge of exploding. Well, if that's the case, don't pressurize it to 100 PSI. You know, you can pressurize these to whatever you want. That's what's nice about it. You can go 20 PSI, 30, 50. Uh, now, I wouldn't go above 100. I, I feel fine going to 100. I don't think it's even close to uh, bursting. Uh, but pressurize it to whatever you want. Now, what I'm going to do is build an enclosure. I've got a 600-pound pressure gauge that I ordered, and I'm going to put another fitting on this so we can have that pressure gauge. And I've got a 6,000-pound nitrogen bottle that we're going to pump this up until it can't hold nothing, until it's... It, to, until it explodes now before i do that one of the other co not one many of the other comments was well you would have to pressurize this multiple times before you get all the fluid out of it well i've used this about twice now all the way down i've refilled it and i've gotten i've gotten all the fluid out of it on one pressurized charge now that's at 100 psi now obviously if you only pressurize it to 20 or 30 th that may be the case you may not get all the fluid out of it before the pressure drops too low but just to kind of show before i pressurize this to failure i'm going to spray i'm going to weigh this and we're going to spray all the contents out of it back into my wd-40 jug here and we're going to uh see if it'll go all the way that's 11 ounces and it feels to be, I mean, just by feeling, it feels to be maybe about halfway full, maybe just a little bit higher than that. Uh, maybe about right up to here, just kind of feeling it and shaking it. Uh, but it, it should have about nine ounces in it. I don't know what the can weighs, but it, I put three of these bottles in it. These bottles are supposed to be three ounces. I have not measured that either. It's a hundred milliliter. I don't know what milliliter is. Uh, converted to ounces but anyway whatever it is it's three of these and what i'm going to do all in one shot hopefully is i'm going to spray this entire contents of the wd-40 back into here and then we're going to weigh this again to see how much actually came out just to prove that one charge will deplete all the contents and then we're going to uh, blow this bottle up once I build the enclosure. So here we go. Now I'm going to try to hold this can straight as straight up and down as I can to make sure that it gets all the way to the bottom. Feels like it's getting close. Can is completely empty. So let's see what she weighs in right now. This is just an empty can. 3.2 ounces. So we had maybe about 8 ounces in it, I guess. I can't remember the exact weight. Was it 11? Was it right at 11 ounces or was it higher? I can't even remember now. Anyway, you guys can do the math. Uh, so one charge got all the contents out with no problem. So now I'm going to build an enclosure, uh, figure out what I'm going to need to do as far as getting my gauge connected to the can and my uh, nitrogen hose connected up here to the Schrader, and then we will uh, go from there. Anyway, let me get this stuff set up so we can do this. Hey guys, how you doing today? 
So uh, my most popular video has been me soldering this Schrader valve to this can. It's been absolutely amazing how many views this has gotten in such a short amount of time. But with that has also come a uh, bunch of hate comments. Uh, so we're going to find out for sure how much pressure this particular aerosol can here will hold uh, before it blows. I've got a 6,000 pound nitrogen tank. I'm going to pressurize this to failure and we're going to find out what part of it gives up and at what pressure. I've got a little deal rigged up here that I've made. A little piece of copper tube, a T, and a uh, 600 pound pressure gauge. Uh, I don't think we'll even wor have to worry about it going over 300 pounds because I'm pretty sure this can will give up before then. Now, before I did that video where I soldered this on, I did a little Googling to find out how much pressure one of these cans will hold. Uh, the number that I found just Googling around was between 200 and 280 PSI. So I felt fine pressurizing this can to 100 PSI. If you understand PSI, pounds per square inch, now think about that. If I put 100 pounds per square inch, that means a square inch of area has 100 pounds being exerted on it. Well, this 3 16 is way under a square inch. So I did some rough math. There's only about 17 PSI being exerted on this uh, fitting. You know, some people were saying that this could shoot out of there like a bullet if uh, that solder uh, gave up. Well, it'd shoot out if the solder gave up, but not like a bullet, because there's only about 17 PSI being exerted on that little 3 16 uh, nub. Now, this part, that's probably got close to 100 PSI on it. This definitely has 100 PSI on it. That's a big area, and it's just cramped right along here. So my guess is what's going to fail on this can is I think this bottom's probably going to blow out. I don't think the fittings will blow out. I don't, depending on how well this end here is crimped on versus this end, I mean, this end could blow out first, but I think it's either going to be this end or this end. I don't think the fittings will, uh, and I don't think the can, the can is actually, I don't feel a seam on this can, so the can must be solid. It must be a solid piece of, uh, of uh, tube. Some of them are, you know, you see a seam running down the side. Uh, this can does not have that. It does not appear. So we're not going to have to worry about that. Anyway, uh, let me get my deal set up. Let me kind of show you what I've got going on here. I've built a little containment uh, apparatus here. It's just made out of some old 2x12s. Uh, oh, by the way, this clear plexiglass window if anybody knows what that's out of let me know I'm curious to see how many people pick that out anyway uh, I've got holes drilled in it for pressure release so when this thing goes hopefully instead of it blowing the whole wood compartment apart uh, these half inch holes here all the way around will be enough to uh, let the pressure escape but Nonetheless, I'm going to be uh, behind cover, and I'm going to have a moving blanket uh, thrown over the top of this. I'm going to put this camera that I'm filming this with right above this window here, looking down with a light, and uh, another camera uh, aimed at the uh, pressure gauge. So anyway, let me get this set up, and then uh, the camera will come back on. All right, guys, so I'm set up. Uh, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to start cranking up the pressure. I can't actually see the uh, pressure gauge from where I'm at. So I'm just going to have to uh, pressurize it until I hear it pop. I'm on the other side of the shop, and I've got a moving blanket over the uh, enclosure. So let's go put some pressure to it.
Okay, I'm going to voice over on this part because I didn't realize once I closed the shop doors, it blocked the ambient light coming in and the reflection that you see on the gauge is the overhead light in the shop. So I'm just going to have to voice over and kind of walk you through this. Now, since the reflection's there, I'm going to put a red arrow at the 12 o'clock position, which is where the 300-pound uh, reading is. So you can see the 100 pound, the 200 pound is just where it starts being blocked by the reflection, and 300 pound is at 12 o'clock. Now you can see the pressure starting to come up. I'm over at the uh, nitrogen tank. I'm slowly opening the regulator, and uh, I have no idea how much pressure is going in the can right now. The regulator on the uh, nitrogen tank is a very coarse regulator, so... It goes up to 1,000 PSI, then 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. So I can't actually see this fine or, or this low of a pressure reading. So right there, we just hit 100 PSI. Once we get up to 200, uh, that's where the needle starts being obstructed from the reflection. So we're just going to have to look at the, the back end of the needle and kind of judge about how much pressure we've got. Now remember, the 300 pound mark is at right at the 12 o'clock position. So watch the back of the needle, and I'll try to keep you updated right before it blows. Uh, so right there, we're roughly at about 200 PSI, and it's still going. And if you watch the uh, press button, uh, the push button on the can, here in a minute you'll see it kind of it almost looked like it was getting ready to pop loose, but uh, it actually held in there. And uh, right there we're coming up, it looks like at about 250 PSI. I really wish I would have walked over and looked at the uh, gauge right after I closed the shop doors. That might be closer to 250 right there. Now look, pay attention to the bottom of the needle. We're coming up on 300 PSI. Now, you see the push button kind of moved a little bit. That means it's under some pressure. We're right at 300 PSI. So it held right at 300 PSI before it let go. So let's go take a look at some carnage. All right. Well, it looks like we got some success there. And look at that. It split the case. I had this moving blanket on it just to soak up any more energy. So let's get this over there. Let's take this apart and let's take a look at everything. All right, let's get this thing out of there. That thing blew so hard. Oh, it look, well, it broke the fitting it off. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just as I thought. So I don't think this fitting gave. I think that whenever this end blew off, it just ripped that fitting right out of there. Of course, you can see that this fitting stayed. So just as I suspected, and to me, that only made sense that the end was going to be what was going to blow off. And the reason is because you've got more pressure per square inch on this end that's just crimped on than you do on either one of these fittings, even on this piece right here. What caved that in was whenever this thing blew, it shot off like a like a rocket. Check that out. Man, that's amazing. So this end, perfectly intact. The fitting, this fitting, that's what bent this rod. You know, it was in there, and whenever it, whenever it went, it took the rod with it until it finally just snapped off right there. Now, at this point, I don't know how much pressure it held. I was not able to uh, to see the gauge where I was standing. I didn't want to be in harm's way, so I was standing out of the way behind some toolboxes and stuff. Anyway, there you have it. Whatever that gauge read before it blew is uh, how much pressure, that th at least this particular can, uh, would hold something else 
I don't know if you can see in there, but these cans are coated. Now, that was another thing. Someone was saying, well, those the inside of those cans are going to rust. You need to throw those away after two or three refills. Well, not necessarily, because as you can see in here, let me let me get some light. The inside of these cans, as you can see, they're they're coated. The reason they coat them is because obviously starting fluid was in this can. You think starting fluid's not caustic up against raw steel? So they coat them. That way, regardless of what they put in these, it's not gonna it's not gonna deteriorate the uh, the wall of the uh, metal. Now, wherever you now, I don't know if you can see down there where my where my original solder joint is. But whenever you use a soldering iron, there's very little. Uh, damage done to that inner wall of the coating now when you use a torch like I did on this one this one here was soldered on with a torch uh, you can see how, how it's burned that coating off so around that fitting over over time you could build up rust this one I don't think so much you're up above everything uh, especially if you got WD-40 in it or any kind of oily based substance you're probably going to be all right anyway but uh, some of those comments was like, oh man, I think it's just going to be a rust bucket and it's going to completely rust through. Well, I don't know. I doubt it. In fact, uh, I can't remember which was the inside and which was the outside. They're going like that. I don't know if the inside would have a mark on it like that. This must, this must have been the inside. And you can tell that is not bare aluminum or steel that's coated. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, can't wait to get in there and review the footage and see how much pressure it actually held. You guys take care.